What's up political gamers? Welcome back to Politicized Gaming and in this video we're going to be playing Iran and we're going to be doing the infantry only challenge as per requested for my 600 subscriber special. Now before we get into the video I'm going to go into the rules for this challenge and the only rule will be to use infantry only of course. Now this challenge was pretty hard. It took me three attempts to get it right. The first attempt I was playing Canada and I did succeed, but by the time I had all the infantry tech researched and I was ready to go to war, everybody had left the server and that wouldn't have been an action packed video. So I just scratched that one. And for the second one, it was also a success. I played the UK in that one and invaded Russia, but then I lagged out, so I couldn't use that one either. And now we're on to the third attempt, which is Iran. And this is the best one I've had so far. But while we're on the topic of hard challenges, do you know what else is hard? That's competitive gaming. That is why I've decided to make a Rise of Nations Discord server that goes by the name of Rise of Nations Esports. This server will be dedicated to helping the community get better at the game. We will be hosting tournaments and events that you have the ability to get uh, Robux prizes from or maybe even money prizes. So if you're looking to practice your skills on Rise of Nations, this server is for you. We also have a community server. This is a private server which is funded out of Robux out of my own pocket. So if you're tired of paying for your own private server, just join this one right here. Maybe you want to test some things out or you just want to play in it and be by yourself and not be in a public server. We also have a general, a memes, an events, and a trash talk channel. A trash talk channel, you will be able to um, express your opinion about everybody in the server, including me. And that's it on the information about my Discord server. The link will be in the description. Anyways, enjoy the video and have a good day. All right, so first things first, the first thing you want to do when starting all out is pick the top two cities, build electronic factories, and pick the two below that and build fertilizer factories. If you don't know how to get to the city overview, it's in the economic tab, and then you just click on city overview. Now we're going to be justified on Afghanistan and Turkmenistan. The reason why we are going for the sands first and not Iraq or Kuwait, I know I see a lot of Iran players doing that, is because there's a Russian player and a Chinese player. So the Chinese player is going to want to target Kyrgyzstan and the Russian player is going to want to target Kazakhstan and then so on. So that's why we're going for that, to go ahead and secure those countries first so we don't have to fight them later. And this Russian player is also the reason why we're going for the Caucasus first, because he's good, definitely going to want those countries as well. So why not just grip them first?
Now, as you can see, I noticed the Denmark player going for Egypt. And if you don't already know, we need Egypt to form Persia. Now, as you can see in chat, right after we declared war on Denmark, I'm obviously not prepared for this war, so we need some allies in here. So I go ahead and say some stuff in chat, um, try to turn France against Denmark. As you can see in chat again, this this encounter between me and Denmark is really funny. And two years after the war started between me and Denmark, he has decided to make the first move. If you don't know the reason why I declared it's to prevent him from forming because he stole um, Egypt from me. So I decided to get back at him. But he doesn't know that I am researching infantry tech right now. So he is in for a surprise. Yes, unfortunately, I did uh, break the rules right here because I did make a submarine. If you were watching chat, uh, this dude said that there was 10K tanks near India. So I, I was just uh, being precautious. But unfortunately, I did break the rules. So...
Now China has for some reason joined the war and he placed all of his troops next to my entrenched mountain troops. So that was, uh, uh, let's just say not a smart move by him. He's definitely not gonna break that and he ends up leaving after that offensive, so. Now, as you can see, I have a very large infantry stack moving towards mainland Denmark. He has not seen this yet, so it should be a very good surprise attack. And we have now launched our surprise attack. This attack ends up taking uh, like half of his land and his capital. So just a tip, after you capture an enemy's factory, if you destroy it, they'll lose money and they'll lose access to the resources they were gaining from it. Now, as you can see on screen right now, this is my second rule break. Uh, I've made two destroyers. This is so I could uh, kill the attackers on Cairo. They were really annoying, so that's another rule break.
Now, as you can see, that very long war is now over. We won, and now we're ready to take over the rest of Asia. Now, just to show you guys how strong this infantry experience modifier is, they just spawned in and we just started training them. So it should be about 10 seconds of training and then they turn into um, veteran stacks or the thing above specialization. So And they spawn as plus 50 defense attack. So that's pretty good. And we are one of the two players last standing, so I'm pretty sure we won this game. Basically, with only infantry, I did make one submarine and two destroyers. So I guess the challenge was technically a fail. But the majority of the time, I was using infantry. So this was fun, and that's it for this video, and have a good one.